So Jingle All the Way opens with the 20th Century Fox logo. Wow. Yeah. I just wanted to point it out because it's been, what, like six years since the uh, Fox acquisition by Disney? And I think we... Let me check. <laughs> Yep, that's what I put the further diary. and further we get away from it, though, it's just like the more fucking tragedy it is that Fox just doesn't exist anymore. And I think if we wonder why, what's wrong with the movie business right now? Hey, you know, portion of it is there's just one of the major studios just doesn't exist anymore. No there's no clever competition. foxes. No clever foxes. No, no Rolling Stones to the Beatles. Nothing to, right? I mean, push it, push yes. each other to their better limits that's not it you know what i mean have something to compete against something real right there used to be there used to be one more major player now there's not and um i'm sure within two years maybe the the warner brothers will probably be purchased by one of the others probably by universal and um you know it's like in cloud atlas they call the section that takes place in the future they call all movies disney's and like that's not hard to imagine that only disney will exist in the future have i seen this movie you have okay I'm sure it was great. Yes, the movie opens with uh, an episode of Turbo Man, and this is a pretty good recreation of a Power Rangers episode. Mm -hmm. This movie is maybe a year too late to the Power Rangers party, but you know it's okay. Uh, it is probably too too high production value for an episode of Power Rangers. I don't remember you were you were too old for Power Rangers. I was, but I would watch it like this, like, oh, I'm too cool. I'm not really well because I'd be at before care at the owl tree uh -huh. and they'd play, you know, stuff for people younger than me. And so I'd have to sit there and watch it. And I I hated it and watched it. Yeah. I, I hate watched it. Sure. It was I mean, I, I found it very. I knew Saved by the Bell was cheesy, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. There's something about this cheese that I very much hated. Yeah, it, it would be. um because, you know, the way they made the show was in Japan, there's a show called Super Sentai and the, the American version would just keep the action sequences from Japan and then shoot new live action footage with American actors, which would lead to discrepancies like the Pink Ranger has a skirt because she's a girl, but the Yellow Ranger, who in America is also a woman in the Japanese version is played by a man. So the power Rangers themselves, the yellow Ranger does not have a skirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, so there were, there were discrepancies like that. It would be funny if, if in this section, Wait, like they yeah. explain to me how, what, what parts. So there are parts of the power Rangers that were used from this, these, the show. In right. Japan? So yeah, because they're costumed, they're masked. Oh, you just dub over Amer the American actors, but you just keep all of the action sequences where they're fighting behind their masks. Wow. And yeah. then when they take their masks off, that's when you now cut in your new footage. Okay. <laughs> and that's why these are these non-union <laughs> actors, these non-union actors just doing a really shitty Saved by the Bell sort of impression. Yeah, no, completely. Um, they all just look like stuntmen. Mm -hmm. They don't look like they're acting. They look like they're moving around. But you you see the 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 pink ranger has a skirt. Yeah, it, the yellow ranger does not. I never read it as a skirt to me, but now I see it. But you know, but you know, the yellow ranger in this also doesn't have a dick. So there's you know that's some continuity, not one I can see, not a protruding dick. Whose dick can you see? None of them. But if you could see the yellow one's dick, I'd really be taken out of it. You know, I'd really know it wasn't probably a yellow lady ranger. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying that was good. Lack of dick. It would be funny if like they, they um, you know, have this action going and then they cut away to like an obviously different actor playing Turbo Man who's like, oh, 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 I'll get you Dementor. It'd be funny if you kept in the much, if this this just looks too good for Power Rangers, if it looked more shitty. That's all I'm saying. I was in a rush to get to the real shit movie that was going to be happening after this fake show. So I didn't give it a lot of thought except for that. I was already annoyed. I'm just like, oh, they're world building. Who gives a fuck? It's a fucking hour and 20 minute movie. I don't need you to build a world here. Like just, I get it. It's a fucking action figure. I understand what those are. I don't need this whole other stuff. Oh, and it has a sidekick. I can get that from context clues. I don't need this. This is good. This is the, the, <laughs> the world building is good. And the director's a toy guy. So, you know, he's going to care about these details. That's true. That's why this movie's so good. Okay, so <laughs> then we cut away and we meet this little piece of shit, Jake Lloyd as Jamie. Okay, but he looks just like our nephew. 
<laughs> he looks just like him. So uh, I see a cute little boy who can act. He also really seems younger in this still that I took than he does in the rest tiny. of the movie. No, I mean, I I did. I felt um, while watching this, like they definitely went through for maybe a year younger than the kind of little boy that's usually the driver of one of these movies. He's, he seems almost too young. He's like right after toddler. Where he looks older though, but he's acting like he's I when think we I see find him, him tiny, like when, four years, like five. Oh, but okay. I mean, the actor seems like he's seven playing five. Yeah. When when we first see him, he's watching the TV show and he's like doing the moves from the show and he's saluting at the TV. Yeah. We've had lots of, you know, kids that we've seen watch television. Have we ever seen a kid actually like, you know, in Dora the Explorer? They're like, what do you think? And then they wait for the kid to respond. I, I think that, that he's supposed to be playing someone right out of toddler age. And I thought and I did. Um, I I don't know. I don't I don't have any typical boy children in my life that I've watched watch any TV for a very long time. So I can't say. Um but anyway, I thought like he's gotta be at least a year or two younger than even the boy that's in the Santa Claus. And that boy's pretty young when you consider how old Macaulay Culkin is playing. Mm-hmm. And these each year makes a bigger difference at this at this span of life. So it's not that much different in age, but it it is interesting. It's like the younger they make the the kid, the less they want you to care about the kid. It's like, ah oh, yeah, kid, kid, kid. Okay, now adults come in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like there's an age of when this becomes a kid's movie, a movie that's going to be run by the kid. Right. Uh, all again. All the home video marketing of the movie makes it seem like this is the movie about this kid because he's right, no. he's on the poster. It couldn't but, have been. Uh, uh, let's circle back to Jake Lloyd and the Phantom Menace okay. because this is not, not being you know this movie became his Phantom Menace. One of huh? the ten most important things in your life, of uh, the Phantom Menace. Um, I just want to play a clip for you from the Phantom Menace. You said so we were circling see. back. Why are we circling now? Hmm? Oh, I thought you said we were coming back to this. We are now, though. I thought we were leaving it and coming back. It's no, I, fine. Circling. We circle We've back. We've now circled. Yes, We've, this is the circle got right it. here. All right, let me play just, this is maybe like two minutes, but I want for you to experience, maybe I'll cut this out, but I want listeners and viewers, Lacey's now going to watch Jake Lloyd as Anakin Skywalker when we meet him in the movie. Okay. Okay, but Natalie's not giving him much either. No, she also sucks. <laughs> That's what then, I realized. And then what happened? Yes. You're a little boy. You wash cup? Yeah. That cup dirty? Dirty cup boy? Nobody's good in the is Star the Wars directing? prequels. It is George I mean, Lucas it's... in total control and And having a nap? This was nap time? No, he I mean he says like I don't understand people. I'd Oh. He he'd rather everybody just be computers. He just wants to tell them he okay. just doesn't want them to, you know, doesn't understand. Here I want you to play this scene with this, with emotion. this emotion. Yes. Right? This yeah. is what I'm going for. So then we cut over to Arnold Schwarzenegger as Howard Langston in his office, and they're having quite a Christmas party. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that like most of my, I feel like once an episode, I point out food in movies. You do? Yeah, I'm always taking, look at this piece of pie she's not eating. Look at this great spread at this Christmas party. So apparently this it is like an a obsession shit, of my- a shit spread. Oh, but there's a lot of it. I don't what? know. This looks like a really expensive Christmas party. I guess. But there's like a pasta salad in a basket. That's not the way to have pasta salad. But tell us about Howard Legston when we first meet him. Well, I mean, they're not doing a whole lot of work to explain what he is, but he does seem like he is probably owns this business. Otherwise, why he is he's so committed to the customer support aspect of his job. Yeah, but it's even sadder if he doesn't own the business. It's and I super think he fucking doesn't sad. own the business. Who, he's just some shitty middle manager. We don't even know what this business is. It's just, it's supposed to be very cute that he's just so busy, but he still turns on the charm and tells everyone that he that he's servicing via the phone that they're his number one customer. Yeah. It. I mean, whatever. Okay, we get it. Office party. He's not even boozing it up and chasing some skirt around the party. He's just shuffling paperwork and looking at equipment on a desk that he has no idea how to use. Um, and we're supposed to believe that he is business dad. He Here is, comes business dad. He is business dad. But we see right away with this, because we have a montage of him telling different customers on the phone. You're my number one customer. And I just think like right away, okay, this is not Arnold Schwartz. You should, 
Arnold Schwarzenegger can't play insincere. No. He can only, he's like the most sincere. He, right. He can't, like, this is supposed to be schmarmy, shitty guy. Like, is he? Uh, that's a schwarmy? Maybe that's why it's just not. He's supposed to be slimy. On page, yeah, that's what it's, and that's what this—that's what this is supposed to communicate to you. It can't. He can't. Right. What a misread of like what works about him. Right. If this were, you know, Tim Allen in this, and obviously just in the Santa Claus is a very similar. Oh yeah, you could have put a could have put a clip of that right here, and that'd also be the appropriate kind of business dad. Right. You've got a picture of Robin Williams here from Hook, mm -hmm. who I think they do a great job of setting up the kind of dad he is and, and, and the level of importance, the middle manageriness of where he is in his role at the companies. And you know, right away, Robin Williams is important, but he's still climbing the ladder and that he's very overly invested in his career and probably not getting the respect he wants. So he's probably kind of letting that bullshit trickle down the ladder to his family here. Arnold seems happy as a clam to yeah. be answering all these phones and telling people how much he loves them. And, not knowing how to use his desk objects. I don't think it's actually like, I think he does love his family and is happy to go see his family. He's just like, can't manage his time well. Whereas yeah, like that's on, right. on paper, this should be like a man who is way more interested in work than his family. But like right. Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, no, I'd, I'm, why would I be that way? I'm, I'm a nice man. I'm a nice family man. I love answering the phone every time it rings. Yes. It's and not at all so going through this movie again this week, to make my to make my notes, make my outline, I noticed how much it seems like. I guess on on paper on the script, they want him to do something shitty and smarmy, but yes, it just it, doesn't work because it's him. And I don't know if Arnold himself was like telling the director, "No, I'm not doing that," or they just realized like it's not going to be believable if Arnold acts this way. But there's like deleted scenes where he's uh, like rehearsing his apology speech to his wife, and it's like this is supposed to be a shittier person than yeah. he is playing in the movie. Yes. So it all falls apart. A hundred percent. He's he's busy at this office party talking to his clients and his his assistants like it's you're gonna miss the kids karate class and he's like no I'll do it I know do it I can't wait for your accent all through this episode truly it's one of my favorite things about our podcast is the mad accents the back accents as I like to call them um, thank you I they only had one event for a child that they had to observe correctly in this movie I know it's a nitpick but. All they had to do was understand where karate takes place and know that it's not a a school after school sport a that school you do gymnasium. in a huge gymnasium. Gymnasium. You also belt ceremonies are not done with every single person who goes to that dojo getting their belt on that day. Like that doesn't. It's just that only one person needed to know how karate worked for this to be a, just. Why take us out of it if you're going to bother putting us in it? It's so. It could have been anything else. <laughs> that is that is a nitpick. In the, it was the nineties. Karate was so hot. Did you do karate in the nineties? I did. Yeah, I went all the way to the yellow belt. Oh, I couldn't even get the yellow belt. Oh. I got a yellow piece of duct tape on my. My mom paid belt. for that yellow belt, and then I immediately quit. But I love. I only realized as an adult. You know, I took what we called karate, and they're like, "What type of karate is it? Is it's, it's taekwondo." Which if, which I realize is like saying, "I'm going to go get my favorite type of Chinese food, sushi." It's just like, because oh. Taekwondo is Korean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, And karate America. is Japanese. Yeah, but it's like, no, it's all, you know, what kind yeah, of, yeah, is we, it Japanese karate or is it Chinese some karate? Some of delicious, delicious Chinese food from Japan. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why do we suck so hard? A more broad question. Hmm. We talked do a lot about. you mean like a question for a broad? For a broad, yes, for you. Okay. You're the broad of this show. Tell me. We talked Arnold on our 2020 Terminator 2 episode, but refresh us. What are your thoughts on the man himself? Um, the, the, like his character as a person no, in just, real life? What okay. do you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger so, as a movie uh, star? When I got to pick the my my own movies that I would be watching in mm -hmm. my life, I, I think I had a good opinion of him. I, I love Twins. I love Kindergarten Cop. Um, and that was, that was probably the extent of any kind of interaction with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But he's delightful. In, um, in both of those movies. He's a great fish out of water, earnest, like just wants to do the thing he's supposed to do. I just, I'm just here to drive the plot. Keep, keep, we got to keep going. We must go. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, in, I didn't know there were movies where they put him in the wrong stuff. I guess I, I know I saw Junior because you, you put the movie poster up um, earlier and I had a strong reaction to <laughs> it. So I guess there must be, 
I must have also seen the fall. <laughs> I don't know. He he didn't play a huge role in my life in, in a way that I know he's really important to su- certain people. But your opinion of him is just like it's positive. It's not. Yeah. In I the think, right role. He's, oh, love. True Lies, which I love. I loved that movie. So that'd be another one where he can even play a love interest if done the right way. I think people I don't I don't know so much anymore, but I feel like maybe 15 years ago, people, you know, thumbed their nose up at him. Like like what he doesn't make high art. Yeah. But so what? Like, but that's the only kind of art that matters. Yeah, I guess. Or just, you know, he's not somebody to be taken seriously. He's a one trick pony. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I look again at his career and especially and so much of it is informed by today, by what movie stars do today and what movies get made today. The comparison to him is Dwayne Johnson right now. And Dwayne mm-hmm. Johnson would never make the choices. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He would never submit himself Isn't that to just better management. Can't no, he's really- not willing. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, as a producer, hired directors like Paul Verhoeven to work with and say, you can tell me I will. I'm I'm yours. Do with me what you will, even if it makes me look bad. Okay. Uh, and like The Rock would never do that. Oh Yeah, but the, the Rock comes from an acting background and wrestling is very much a show. Someone who, you need to be able to manage yourself to, to develop a persona to even get noticed by Vince McMahon and to, to rise up in those ranks. Arnold Schwarzenegger was just like, uh, this oddity to be gazed upon he he was in he's in bodybuilding that is completely fucking different in fact people put you into poses he's literally a lump of clay so it makes sense i okay i get i get i get why the rock would wants to make oh, the decisions so but sorry, in trying so to obvious. make better trying to make better things and and push yourself i uh, arnold did the right thing which is oh, submit the- to submit to strong directors whereas Dwayne Johnson just hires directors who who he can push around. And Arnold did the opposite. Who are you saying has the good career? I'm completely confused. Schwarzenegger. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Should we go back and do all this again? No, I just didn't. I, I guess I only seen The Rock and things that I like him in, and I don't really follow him around much. And I don't know what he's up to. Oh, he makes four movies a year, and they're all terrible. Oh, I did not know. <laughs> and, and, and he was, like, trying to sort of do different kinds of roles early in his career, and he stopped. And okay. there's, you know, stories about, like, he 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 can never look bad. He can never, like, have the lower hand in a scene. He always has to win every fight he's in on screen. Oh, that's gross. And he... um He takes himself too seriously. He takes himself seriously, takes his takes his roles, Persona. but in a, in a, you know, in the, the shittiest, most superficial way. Yeah, Even like weird it, things like I don't want to surprise anyone any ever. I don't want anyone ever walking away from the theater going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, no surprise. Even That's like odd. Like uh like in the Fast and Furious movies, they had the same actress playing his daughter, who who is like a little kid, and uh, and she would naturally age up, and by the time he gets his, you know, solo movie, Hobbs and Shaw, this actress would now be a teenager, but he's like, now recast her with a younger actress so that because like if I'm playing against a teenage daughter that will present a different dynamic I want just pure wholesome me and cute kid relationship oh that's gross I didn't need to know that about him can't he just stay Maui in my mind (laughs) that sucks you know he's doing they're doing a live action Moana and he's gonna so he can play Maui wait wait wait. they're doing it so he can play Maui (laughs) I mean they're doing it because that's what they do but okay you know He's 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 returning. Mo- the Moana actress is not, but he's going to be there playing live action Maui. Good for him. Uh, will Howard make it to the dojo on time? Most assuredly not. This is bizarre. Okay, so now we, <laughs> me and our kid looked at each other several times to be like, what are we supposed to think of this guy, this Ted guy? Yeah, Ted we, Phil Hartman. We are now at the gym. Uh, where the fucking karate's happening and apparently everyone in the entire neighborhood has the exact same activities that they do. So so uh, Schwarzenegger's neighbor, Ted, is there sitting right next to his wife who is there and he's, Ted's got the video camera, he's Johnny on the spot, he's the best, he's a, he's what? He's a divorcee? I, from this scene, I think he's a handyman. I think he's a prostitute. I think he's married. I think he's not married. Yeah, it's so it unclear. Is yeah. a horribly convoluted scene. I think he's creepy and I think he's a love boat. I Like there are women fawning all over him, asking him to come fuck. And then <laughs> then, then um, Schwarzenegger's wife, I'm sorry, I should use names. Um, let's Liz. call her... 
Liz. All right. And then Liz is sitting next, like, I, I as I, I think I remember, just kind of going, oh, or mm-hmm. ooh. Anyway. The idea, which is not communicated here, is he's a divorced dad who I guess has custody of his kid, and he's performatively super dad. And this makes all the other mothers fawn over him. I wish my husband would be, you know, this close to there to my son. Here, I baked you cookies. Super dad and like a super man, and yeah. just he can fix everything. He knows he he knows when a woman needs to take a bath and lie down. <laughs> like I he's guess just, he's ev- he's trying to be everything. And I guess there's maybe like a metatextual like compare him to Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is a literal you know he's like a Greek god but they don't look at him that way they're like he's the shitty dad Phil Hartman oh my (laughs) he can fill my heart man okay so now we have our first interaction with the cop that Arnold Schwarzenegger's character is going let me just sorry Schwarzenegger's such a mouthful what am I calling this man? Howard, who Howard is going to run into over and over again throughout this movie. He gets pulled over for speeding. So now we know he's not going to make it on time. Um, I f- I don't know this actor. The cop. This is Robert Conrad. He's a character actor who's been in a billion things. Sure. Best known to audiences as playing Secret Service agent Jim West on the television show Wild Wild West. Okay. There's uh, interesting. Um, I, think I he's, prefer I Will think Smith. He's, great. He's, so, he's so funny in this movie. There's just some, I don't I don't enjoy his look. I don't know what it is that rubbed me wrong. I just kept waiting for it to be someone more familiar, more comedically familiar maybe too. I know they don't give him a lot to do, but we do keep seeing him, so I guess I just thought there should be a different person here. I don't know. Yeah, they needed to ask themselves, who does Lacey Roth know? Cuz I think he's very funny. He has the best line in the movie. He broke my little mirror. Okay, that is that is the best. Mo- uh, that is the best line. But I mean, sure, fine. I don't know. This they they put a character actor in every other damn spot, and you're saying he is one. That's fine. I just, I I I I got a you know I went limp when I saw him every time. <laughs> just went oh. All right. Well, I'll make sure he doesn't appear in anything else we watch. Well, another in a role where he's supposed to make me creeped out. Then great. But I don't think I'm supposed to be creeped out by him. I think I'm supposed to go. Oh, here's dad. He's gonna ruin our fun. Boom boom. That's how I'm supposed to feel about this cop. But instead, I feel like, ew. I feel like exactly what you're saying you want is this is ew. what this guy is pr- providing. Is you want, you want a solid, funny character actor. No, I felt no funny. I felt, ew. All right. I don't know why. Okay. Well, Ted is at, we cut to, to Howard's house and he pulls up. He's missed his son's big karate ceremony and he pulls in and Ted Phil Hartman is on Howard's roof. Doing the Christmas sin. What's he doing up there? Doing man? the Christmas sin. Doing the Christmas sin. Putting up elaborate decorations that take hours when Christmas is one fucking day away. This is an outrage. Uh, Outrageous. I mean, yes. I, I think you have permission to just shoot him off your roof at this point. But oh, I don't even care that he's on my roof. Just it's fucking oh, movie. Of, of this again. Yeah. Get- um do something different movie. Oh, it's Christmas. We should do Christmas decoration. There are plenty of things that are Christmas related that you do right up until the last fucking second that Christmas comes. Putting your decorations up are not one of them. Lacey wants verisimilitude. She wants realism. She wants to feel like she's watching And then they're in the town square. They're in the town square running around looking for the doll. And there are people, extras, hauling a, tr- a Christmas tree, walking a Christmas tree through a plaza. That's not how you get a tree, number one. Number two, it's Christmas Eve. But, but they're, they're, I, I mean, my maybe biggest pet peeve in life is somebody mad at you because they're doing a favor for you that you don't <laughs> want and they're making you look like the bad guy for right. for it. And I just think it's a, it's a nice little uh, well-observed detail about oh. shitty intrusive people. Oh, you, th- you think this is subtle, do you? Nice little not, well- I did not say the you word didn't subtle, subtle you didn't at say all. Subtle. You didn't. It's just a little well-observed detail. I, well, when I was watching it, I was thinking- Phil Hartman is funny. He can't not be funny. I just don't know that he's the right person to play off of Arnold Schwarzenegger or whatever it is. But then I was thinking, this reminds me too much of the very realistic neighbors of the fucking Christmas classic that we're about to watch next week, which is a Christmas vacation. And the neighbors in that movie are so fucking subtle. Like... It's also under 
played that it's perfect. It, everything they do is funny. Every interaction that the neighbors have with the protagonist are, are golden, quotable, amazing moments. So my, my favorite in the movie. And I just feel like it works because they have such believable interactions. This is re- this is crazy. <laughs> there would not be a man on my roof. Well, yeah, but he's he's still. De- I, I, I the, the people who make The Simpsons would say when Phil Hartman was alive, like if you f- aren't totally in love with the episode you're working on, just add more Phil, like add Troy McClure or Lionel Hutz because Phil Hartman will make it good and he'll save you. And I feel like in the course of making this movie, they're like, just add more, just do more. I could see Phil that. because you're going to save this movie. And he almost does. He is the best part of this movie. It is weird because, you know, I only hear, I only consume him through The Simpsons now just to hear that voice coming out of a person. Yeah. What are these faces? They go, So he goes back in and his wife's like, you miss the karate you bad man but don't explain it to me explain to that little boy up there and so he goes into the you know into the child's bedroom and says i'm 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 so sorry i'm a shitty i know i know i let you down but let me make it up for let me make it up to you i'm gonna do something really special for you jamie (laughs) and Jamie's like, well, okay, here's the thing you can do for me. You can get me a Turbo Man doll because if I don't have one, I'll be a loser because all the other kids in school. This kid was not prepared. Oh, wait, never mind. He asked for it weeks ago. That's interesting. Well, I... I, I, That's interesting. This is a mess because like... This is a mess. They had... they, They already planned on getting him this doll and he's like, you can do the thing that you had already planned to do for me. This is a great example of a of an adult projecting onto a kid the solution that they are capable of of having for that kid like this guy is fucking up on such a fundamental caregiver father give a shit level that jamie can you pretend something's really really important to you and tell me what it is and hopefully it's expensive and then i can get that for you and then i'm not bad anymore it's like he he push he almost pushes jamie into just tell me a thing. And it's like, Jamie doesn't want a thing at all. But the mother almost seems to agree with like that. Like, yes, of course, the thing that you can do for him is buy him the gift. When the... I don't agree. I, I think the mother's not a character. So what she True. actually thinks is unclear. But she's she doesn't... She's like, well, just keep your promise to him. You said you get him the, the doll, get him the doll. But the point, the thing with kids that sucks is what kids actually want is your attention and time. Lots of it. Well, and for you to do what you say you're going to do. And sometimes that's buying a thing. But most of the time, it's just being someplace. It's being, yeah, being with me. Let's have quality time. And what, you know, sucks about being a parent is a lot of parents will say like, well, it's quality time, not quantity time, but actually quantity quality time, time is quality time. Right. But that's the stuff that counts. It's the boring. It's the we're together for long periods of time. Because it's not about the interaction you're having. It's about the comfort they have from knowing when you get home and when they can expect you around, when there's going to be a babysitter and when there's going to be somebody that is a parent who they can completely just decompress around. That's it. They just want to know the beats. Kids just want to be aware of your schedule dude that's why the, qu- the quantity of the time matters or at least be regimented about it but this guy's all over the fucking place it's weird that the mood like the the most like sort of straightforward family message movie would be he needs to realize it's not about the gift the kid just wants you arnold he just wants you but the movie doesn't realize that it's like no he does need the gift until the end where Jamie has to explicitly say it. Why would I need the doll? I have Turbo Man. Jamie is telling you at the end of the movie, I never wanted the fucking doll that much. Mm, I Ever. take it literally as he's like, well, now my dad is Turbo Man. So this I is fine. I mean, I mean, the entire time the movie is screaming at you, just come to the parade. Just go to the karate thing. Just stay home today, dad. Yeah. Like somehow by not fulfilling one promise, it's okay that he's missing all these other ones. It's just, it's very frustrating to watch. Um, Also, I don't read the mom that way. I read the mom as basically being a single parent and she asks the husband to do this one fucking thing for Christmas. So she mentions the doll as in, I hope you got the one thing, did you? Well, It also seems weird for her to leave the one important thing up to him. I'm not going to say it's all on the mom, but... (laughs) But but Liz, she gotten it. know your teammate and don't say like, oh, by the way, this thing four weeks ago I asked you to do, did you do it? That's you need to be checking in over and over again about that. Right. Yeah, it's on mom a bit here, too. Just a little. I mean, yes, the dad sucks, but also 
That's the thing about being married. You gotta, you gotta know. You gotta live you gotta with gotta a know sucky your partner's person. limitations. Yeah, for sure. And just be like, no, well, I checked it off my list, so now I win. I win the marriage. You know, I read it as she is overworked, stretched too thin. I I can't tell if she has a career or not. It doesn't seem blatantly that she does not, but it just seems like she's filling in all the roles because her husband's never home. The, there <laughs> is at least there is at least that idea of of commercialism poisoning Christmas also just poisoning you know families and and our our ability to be happy Mm -hmm. with each other because like Jamie says it's it's not he doesn't want the doll so much that he because he loves Turbo Man but literally it's it's FOMO it's like all the other kids are gonna have them too um and you will see like when he eats breakfast, he's eating Turbo Man cereal. Like everything is just branded. This, this, uh, the, the, the capitalism is crept in everywhere. And that's interesting for them to like dry, push that all the way through this movie so hard and then not have a larger point to make yeah. about it. It, it seemed like they, they did it to actually sell Turbo Man dolls. <laughs> like they made them, yeah. they exist. Sure. And the two, uh, sidekick people or whoever Mm -hmm. it's like okay so this movie i kept saying it feels like a an extended commercial this whole thing just feels the way it's shot the way it sounds the tone all of it feels as important as a 30 second commercial that is it and i think it kind of maybe it was yeah i think so yeah it it, It feels like a cash grab it all adds up to like that's the only takeaway you can have at the end of it. Can't see what the message of this movie is. Can't f- don't really follow any characters like individual emotional journey. Right. In the end, Turbo Man rules. The end, right. If I could only be Turbo Man. In fact, you're thinking, oh, this is interesting. They're they're kind of setting up a, a buddy comedy. I didn't expect a buddy comedy to develop out of this like family Christmas movie, but that's actually interesting here two people from very different backgrounds sinbad and howard and howard doesn't think very highly of of this postman for some fucking reason um even though he seems perfectly lovely Mm -hmm. um but through this through through like going through this war together there he's going to get a turbo man at the end and give it to this guy like because he's going to realize he's he's got what he needs or you know but no but they have the kid do that they allow this poor man to become more and more deranged and like uh, more and more in trouble with the law. No, Sinbad's and journey makes no sense. It's in, it's yeah. mind boggling. And I, and at the end of it, I don't even think he's got a kid. Like I was I, like at the end, I'm like, Oh, he's, he's never had a kid this whole time. This was just like a way to like have friends or like go through, go, go on a little, <laughs> he's crazy. He's a crazy person. Who's been blaming all well, of his actions bleak. on a child? <laughs> that is bleak. But I mean, the, in, a dark, in a different a kind of movie that would work, that would he would be like John Candy in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Like I've been exactly. saying, I have a kid this whole time, but I exactly. Don't. But no, the, this movie's not interested in that. Sad about this man. And and anyway, I thought I was slightly hopeful that that's at least where the movie was going, and nope. like not even a little bit. They're not even going to keep in touch. You can tell. Oh no, <laughs> that kid. His his kid wasn't even like in the audience of the parade you never even get just to get to see a kid go hey dad no, no and he says like he's my, got no kid he's got the cops are taking him away but he's like my kid's gonna get this doll he's gonna be very happy and i wrote in my notes like no he's you're not. gonna the cia is taking you to poland to a black site and your family's never gonna hear from yes, you again those cops one of them are super psyched that they finally get a turbo doll because they definitely didn't you go pipe get it for bombed their kid. a building full of cops yeah. and then you hijacked a parade like you're a terrorist right you chased a i know this is pre-9-11 up a so maybe, building. maybe they're just gonna send him to guantanamo um the dilemma the just now the dilemma of the movie howard was supposed to get a turbo man doll his wife's like did you do it? And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, totally. She's like, oh, great. Because if, you, you know, if you'd forgotten, you'd never be able to get one now. And he's like, what? But yeah, he just lies and says that he did because secretly he plans to just go to the store tomorrow and get one. That's the brilliant. No other parent, of the movie. No other parents think of doing that. Yes. Actually, it's kind of shocking how many parents are doing that in the movie. Well, it's a big world. Sure. Where do they live? Minneapolis, St. Paul. All right. The movie was shot on location mostly in St. Paul and the, you know, the Mall of America's in the suburbs. Oh, and they specifically, that was like the clutch thing is to have the Mall of America because they, they want to show you that, um, that roller coaster in the mall. Like, so you understand how big this yeah. commercial place is, the, the, it, important they, it is. They said the reason they chose it as a filming location is that it has longest winters. 
what? you know, this, this is, this is actually a pretty big production. So you need that snow, you need the cold oh. to last a long time. So if it's the snow's going to stay on the ground for three months or whatever, you got to shoot it there. You can't shoot it in it California. It didn't occur to me the snow was real. I never think about it. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, okay. So it's the morning and, and now he's got to make an excuse why he's got to get up out of the house and not spend Christmas Eve with his family, which is the only thing they actually fucking want. And um, his kid makes it very clear, make it back to this parade. I just want you to come to this parade. I don't care that you're fucking your secretary right now. Come back home, mm-hmm. parade. And he's so fucking confident. <laughs> and he's gonna, anyway, on the way out, he runs into the neighbor again, who's got a, a reindeer. Do we need this reindeer? I don't need this reindeer. Oh no! This is a this is a like fine watch of a screenplay. This reindeer is going to come back later and wreck the house. In a very disturbing scene, wherein a very realistic reindeer gets punched the fuck out. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then gets drunk, made to be drunk by a human. Yeah, <laughs> what I the don't get hell? It. All right. He's he's like I, I have to my wife. I have to go to the office to get the doll. Uh, but he's actually going to the mall. And she's like, but Howard, it's Christmas Eve. Now we've worked at office jobs and we've had to work on Christmas Eve. So I feel like I need to, I feel like I need to make like a sound drop or something for the nineties. Cause like back then you got, you got Christmas Eve off. I don't know. Must be nice. Um, So the shops are crowded. Uh, Howard goes to the store and realizes I'm not the only one with this idea. Um, Somehow, though, they do have a stack of these very needed dolls just to happen to have a huge stack at the one store he picks. Weird. But they're all going to, you know, they're going to be snatched up by, I think they, I think they do at the first location. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's just yeah, everyone. Some, some people do go away from the store with, with these, with the Turbo Man. Right. Doll. And this is where we meet Sinbad. That's where we meet Sinbad, who like takes, he takes up for this, for Howard, for, I guess, Howard kind of, he cuts the line. He just muscles his way right through. Doesn't even notice there's people who are also winning this fucking doll. And they, the crowd starts to turn on him and Sinbad's like, he's just, he's just a dad, man, trying to get a toy. Yeah. I wanted to play this clip of Sinbad as Myron and they, they let him just go and improvise and you just, just revel in Arnold, not giving him anything. <laughs> okay. I didn't know this. I have to shop late because it's the busiest time of year for me. All these important Christmas letters that people send to folks they don't even talk to but once a year. Not to mention relatives sending presents they're going to have to send back anyway. How many toiletry kits does a man need? They're about these little stupid letters from kids to Santa at the North Pole. Dear Santa, could you send me a bike and a slinky? No, your father's been laid off. And as if I didn't have enough pressure in my life, my son sends me off with some, like, goofy butt toy. Some fruity robot named Turtle Man. It's Turtle Man. My son wants one, too. You know it's all a ploy, don't you? A ploy. Man, where have you been? Don't you watch TV? We are being set up by rich and powerful toy cartels. Oh, come now on. Now you got these big fat cats sit there using working class just like me and you. They spend billions of dollars on TV advertisement, and then they sit there and use subliminal messages to suck your children's minds out. And I know what I'm talking about because I went to junior college for a semester and I studied psychology, so I'm right in there. I know what's going on. And then they sit there and make a kid feel like garbage if you, the father, who's working 24-7, delivering mail so you make an alimony payment to a woman that slept with everybody at the post office but me. <laughs> and then when you get the toy, it breaks and you can't fix it because it's a little cheap plastic. You know what I like to do? I like to walk up in that office, grab one of those guys, and just chuck it, 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 Shouldn't wear fur. You shouldn't wear fur. <laughs> it's <laughs> Sinbad does his best. He does. He does what he can. But he like I, I do think again, I just keep saying it again and again. There is a version of this movie that is more about literally everything he says right there is we are all we are all being manipulated. We are all just cogs in the capitalist machine. And kind of in a way like Christmas has kind of always been that. You can read in Charles Dickens Christmas Carol, 1843, Scrooge talking about how Christmas used to be different and better back when he was a kid. So it's like, that's just always something people talk about is, is they're creating like a need in us. Christmas is about nostalgia. Christmas is about getting back to something that makes us feel good, but we can't get it because it's out of reach because they're creating a demand in us. Um, 
and but I do like how he's like he says everything correct except like goes one step further. He's like they're using mind waves to 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 subliminally right. haunt our kids and stuff. And it's like you don't need to go that far. It's just the you've already figured it out. They're just creating they're creating the need in the, in the kids and not now all the kids are looking at each other and like you have a thing so I need the thing too even though none of us actually wants it ourselves. I am relating a little bit more to um, Howard in this scene though because. I- as being someone who is constantly zeroed in on in a crowd <laughs> by the person that wants to rant. Yeah. <laughs> That's happened to me so now, many times. L- Lacey is a magnet, magnet for weirdos and freaks and crowds. Uh, well, really anybody. Anybody. But. It's not. It's. It, I don't think they're weirdos and freaks. I think they're lonely. And I think they, they see, see in me that I will listen. Away. But but I'm listening and, and and by association, I'm co-signing on what the person's saying in a way. <laughs> and every now and then it slips into something crazy. You know? And I'm like, uh-huh, 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 okay. yes, uh-huh. I also and I don't and I just met you and you're a stranger to me. And I will be leaving. Yeah. Anyway, so that the, the look on Arnold's face is relatable. A yeah, few but, times. But it is like, I don't know. He should just be reacting more just oh yeah he should be sillier or like uh or just more uh um, matches energy in some kind of way less just more plus he's too non plus he needs to be more plus by this manic man and so she's like mm, yeah yeah mm, yeah mm-hmm. oh come on um do you remember just backtracking a little you remember reading a book like a parenting book like a million years ago about like simplifying your parenting. Yeah, the simplicity, simplicity, simplicity parenting. parenting. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was about like, don't buy your kids branded toys, but, but yeah. it had like actually good ideas about like have, don't have elaborate birthday parties for your kids. All your kids actually want for their birthday party is like, just be put in a field with other kids and they will have the time of their lives. And it is true. It is true that like what kids, what everybody actually wants is just a more simple, Christmas just wants simpler, more quality time with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For everyone not to be tired by the time that we get to hang out with each other for the, Christmas to exchange the presents. For everyone to not have had seven fights in the car on the way there and to have been stressed and trying to get dressed and get exactly. food made on time. It's like, can we all just agree we'll eat something really simple or we'll order something or... Like, how can we all agree to make this less stressful so that we actually enjoy each other's company when it's time to do it? But the thing that is making us so stressed is we want to create something special for you. We want to create something special for each other. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Well, they go in the store and and like some of the Home Alone antics start with like remote control cars and everybody's yeah. tripping on little micro machines and stuff. Anyway, this this ends with neither Howard nor Myron procuring a turbo man doll and i do feel the entire time that howard is way meaner to myron than he needs to be and way more ruthless and and, and sabotage than than myron's character ever intended to be yeah i think myron would have made good on his promise to like help him find a toy if they would have buddied up no and he should they should partner they should up. have but i did i it, i do know they they do get along except when a turbo man is dangled in front of them. And then once the turbo man is taken away, they then start getting along again. Right. It is if we, we just, we will compete against each other. It's like the hunger games. Mm-hmm. We'll compete against each other when the, when the prize is dangled, but otherwise we can have solidarity with our fellow man. They wanted Sinbad principally because he's as tall as Arnold Schwarzenegger. See, that's interesting because I felt uh, this was the first movie where I felt Arnold seemed short or just average. And and that's why. Yeah. That's got to be why. I mean, the entire time I'm like, why? When have they they've just been filming Arnold like a uh, upshot like the way they do Tom mm-hmm. Cruise or Sylvester Stallone this entire time and I was under the impression he's tall and he's not. Um how tall is Arnold Schwarzenegger? I, I don't know the height, but it You know I like to know. I know I thought and I try to preemptively answer your questions. That's why I put people's ages now all the time. I try to put what you know them from. But fuck, I forgot height. Yeah, I love height. Especially if you're going to bring up height. You're the height miser. No, you just brought up height, motherfucker. So. Sorry. Well, but but then that's we'll have we 
well, the person he's going to be interacting with the most, they'll be similar heights. That way he won't look so abnormal. But no, the point of having Arnold Schwarzenegger right. is that he's a, a fucking god. Right. What's the point of having him look normal? They averaged him up. They put him in brown. They 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 unchiseled him. They did all. I I was so like underwhelmed with him as a person. There's no spectacle. Yeah, because I need the spectacle. The, what what do you have then? What is he good at? Right, he's supposed to seem like an alien. He's supposed to seem like a fish out of water. He's supposed to be seem like a gentle giant. Like like he's scary, but look, you can he's sweet. None of these things happen. And when they make him mean and petty, it's 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 especially off putting. Don't be petty. You already won the genetic lottery. Don't be petty. Good for Sinbad being tall. Is Phil Hartman tall? I don't know if Phil Hartman is tall. I guess I I didn't. Do you know anything about Rita Wilson's height? No, I don't. I didn't think you would. I I think Jake Lloyd definitely puts off short boy energy. Yeah. There's a montage of him going from store to store and employees laughing at him. And there is like the, uh, all the employees are laughing at them. Like you're so out of the loop. You don't even know what turbo man is. Or, and you don't even know that it's crazy that, that it would be very low, um, low odds that you're going to get this toy. If that's so hilarious, why is everybody else fucking there? Yeah, I know. What is it? Crazy or not crazy? I guess the other people are there for other toys because all the other people in the store laugh at them too. But it's like, what's a dad? I'm sure the screenwriter's like, I'm a busy dad. How am I supposed to keep up with all my kids' interests? You will. um, But so what do you think he should do at this point? Howard, if you're Howard, what do you do? The clock is ticking. I my family thinks I'm dead. Probably we don't have cell phones. I would probably start calling every. This is a weird time because there are still toy stores, like in different levels of toy store, like your Toys R Us, and then and then like your, you know, your chain, and then like your local chain, and then like your hobbyist, and and then just small toy store for just. Yeah, it's, not, it's all kinds of variety. So there's a lot of places to call, but I guess I would be looking for something outside of the main town I'm in, and in a smaller town, and and be calling smaller stores, and I'd spend the entire time on the phone. I think you're you're more you're more determined than I am. I would just be like, ah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, what he should do is just. I mean, I wanted to go steal it from the guy's Christmas tree immediately. <laughs> that that was the. I mean, just stage a robbery. So honestly, that's been the easiest thing. The thing I think you do is you go into that store and you buy every line in the turbo, every toy in the turbo man line. Sure. And you're like, look, now you've got it all. And in three weeks or whatever, you'll get the main one. Or even better, just buy a different, buy booster and be like, here, here's your present. And the kid's like, this isn't what I wanted. You're like, oh shit, it's not. Oh, then you're an idiot and a disappointment. No, you don't want your parent to be that stupid. No, 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 no. No, because like at least you give the kid the satisfaction of getting to be mad at you if you fuck up. Don't fuck up and make them feel guilty for being mad at you, Matt. He tried. The kid That's doesn't horrible. know that he... The kid doesn't know that he's he's juggling two lies. He lied to his wife that he already took care of this. He needs to just fess up to her. Uh, but then with the kid, hey, I got you all this other stuff and you'll get the one you want soon. Yeah, I mean, I tried. He absolutely seems like his marriage is fine. So he 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 really missed out on not partnering with his smart wife immediately, mm-hmm. doubling the manpower. And she could have fucked the neighbor, and he would have given her the Turbo Man. There you go. Yeah, right there. Easy peasy. So he goes to the Mall of America, and this movie was very expensive. And part of it, I'm sure, is that they had to pay Arnold. $20 million, but also, I guess, shut down the entire mall for a day and have a, just a billion extras. And this is an okay sequence. It's, they, yeah. He, uh, the, the, this store in the mall has Turbo Man dolls, but they're going to do a lottery system with little ping pong balls. And uh, this was what happened with the Cabbage Patch Kids. I think I have an issue with this movie the way that I'm, I don't understand how I'm also supposed to enjoy meet the parents that the, that the entire movie is in a state of stress of, of when will this be over? And so I can get to like the next thing that this character is going to feel. There's just something very unrewarding about spending the entire time in one mode of being as a human. 
I, it makes I, me tired. I think that comes with it just not having a uh, very fixed perspective or idea that is trying to communicate. If they decided to make him more unlikable, you'd know what you were watching. Um, and if, if he were, you know, an anti-hero or if he were a bad dad and you're right. sort of laughing at how shitty he is right. and laughing at how much, you know, joy he takes in screwing over everybody else. Right. But I, I can't get a good read on if uh, the whole time me and our kid are like, are we supposed to like him? Is he you supposed are. to oh, grow yes. on me yes. that there's not any one time where I like him? He fucking, he can't get a ball. That's all. And he chases a little kid around the play place and the girl, the ball and, um, doesn't get it, but runs into the Jim Belushi Santa Claus and, um, most convoluted freaking scam ever. It's so stupid. mall Santa have the doll at the mall. Mm, he's, he's despondent. He didn't get the doll. And the Santa Claus talks to him and he's like, you want a turbo man? And he's like, you talking to me. Uh, he is. And he's Jim Belushi. And then his elf is played by Danny Woodburn, Mickey from Seinfeld, who, um, who, you know, always has to play roles like this. Uh, but I mean, I wrote down like, this is literally the origin of bad Santa. It, basically. Is it? I've never seen bad. Santa. Oh, I mean, bad Santa is like a movie about like Santa mall Santas and mall elves, like scheming to rob the mall. Like all of them, like a lot of Santas, or just I don't, one, I don't one bad Santa many. and one I, bad elf. I don't remember, but in this movie, there's like a syndicate, an unclear syndicate right. of Santas, and and women. Well, I <laughs> do like that. Clauses. I do like that. They're like, no, we've got it. We've got the uh, we've got the Turbo Man here. He shows him a Polaroid of of Danny Woodburn holding the toy with today's newspaper. That's kind of funny. That, that's funny. I I just immediately taking out of it because if I guess in my head I was thinking. This guy's got multiple $300 uh, Turbo Mans, you know, like he has actual Turbo Men and he's just marking them up like, you know, 600% or whatever. That's a good scheme. That's smart. But it's smart if you put all those, your toys, your your supply in a location close to where you work. Why the fuck are you setting up a scam where for $300 one time you're going to get a stranger in your car, bring them to a warehouse, Go through the warehouse. Yeah, like, it's like that's not when the- is, You guys are splitting this 150 150 You probably paid for the doll to begin with. Is this really worth $150 for you guys? You were working. Now you're not on the clock anymore. I have no idea because they, they, this warehouse just has tons of merchandise in it and it's got a million people working in it. Right. And I guess I, I guess this is like a um, they're stealing from trucks or something and they're Fun. all organizing it centrally this is the this is not a very clear scheme it's not, and the santa part of it the role that, that ha, being a santa has to do with it is that this is how they lure des this how they stake out in a non-creepy way desperate parents and bring them to this warehouse i assume or and these are other mall santas who steal from their malls i don't know fine but each individual mark you trust them enough to bring them to your secret warehouse location and drive there mm-hmm. and then fuck them over mm-hmm. how ha- what? What, what, what? I don't know. All right. Um, this is just so you can see fun, different kinds of Santas. Um, we've got the big Santa and the little Santa and the the naked Santa for some reason that he gets in a fight with. No, he's just not wearing a shirt. And he pops his, his what are these called? Suspenders. Mm-hmm. And it pops back and hits both nipples. And I think, ouch. Mm. Yeah, that happened. Um all right, so he get he does have one. I, I was surprised. I thought there wouldn't even be a doll. And then and then at first it's just like, oh, it's speaking Spanish. It's like, so what? That kid from far away looks like he's playing with the same doll anyone else. Take it. Yeah, is this doll defective or is it is it counterfeit? Is it counterfeit? Or is it just the Spanish edition? But Arnold's pissed off at this. Well, but he takes it out. The, and I'm confused by the whole thing until he takes it out and it all falls apart. I'm like, okay, so it's... Spanish and defective? What? Like it just, or just needed to counterfeit? be counterfeit. It just needed to be one or the other. It didn't yeah. need to be all these things. Which again, no, put it back in the box, take it home. Yes. This is what I got yes. you. Yes. Oh my worth god, it. it fall apart. Oh, this shitty oh. goddamn Chinese plastic. I wonder if anyone else is having a problem with their toy yes, doll too. Get, solution right there. Keep the boy at home for the rest of Christmas and just assume that all of your friends are crying as well. Yes. It's everyone. You've at least bought yourself some time. Right. But okay. So Howard is so incapable of being charming or like socially aware of 
anything he does or says. He's swarmy and stuck up, but also pathetic and lovable. Ah, he's confusing me. So he pisses off this room full of Santas and he gets in a fight with a big Santa. And then, but then it gets raided, I guess, before they can kill him. Mm-hmm. Um, and who do you know, but Mr. No Personality Weird Cop shows up. And- Does he? Does yeah. show up there? Yes, at every at every police interaction, this guy works. That he he is a traffic cop. He is a detective on a sting. He's he's a parade cop. He's a cop that gets a break. I can't remember. <laughs> But Howard does play uh, a Frank Abagnale Jr. from Catch Me If You Can here. He uh, pretends oh, right. he is he a, cop. To be a cop. When they when the cops show up, he's like, what took you so long? Um, he very confidently explains how involved he has been in this raid. <laughs> it's like, you, this has gone on too long. Just move on. Move on. You've, you've gotten away with it. Keep going. I was very excited when I was a kid that the big Santa is played by wrestler Paul White, aka the big I show. I assumed this yeah. was a wrestler. Um, yeah, very, very excited. Now, I can I bore the the shit out of you now? I don't know why you would stop doing okay. that. So, the way I usually make these, with the, here's what we do with our podcast: we make a PowerPoint and then we basically present it to each other. Me and Lacey. That's that's what our podcast is. Hi. So when I was making when I was doing this. I usually make it at my computer and I take, I, I, you know, rip the Blu-ray of the movie and then put it in Adobe Premiere and get clips and stills from the, from there. But last night I was just like sitting down on the sofa and I had some time to kill. So I turned the movie on Disney plus and I get a very funny picture of Paul White waggling his finger. Then I go to the computer to try to find the same shot in the movie that I ripped from the Blu-ray and it's not there. And I get sent down a fucking, what? conspiracy cha- uh, 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 you know bulletin board yarn they're saying a washing of the differences between the Disney plus version and the blu-ray version to eventually discover there's the theatrical cut of this movie and then there's what's called the family fun edition which is four what? minutes shorter and I think is the only version I've seen other than when I saw it in theaters because it's four minutes shorter and it does cut out a bunch of stuff that makes Arnold a little slimier okay in this scene, he Arnold punches the shit out of Paul White to no effect. Like he punches him over and over and over again in the oh. stomach. That's not on Disney Plus. It just cuts to cuts to to Paul White, you know, beating him up. Uh, you don't want him to Arnold to look mean, right? Um, so that's all. Just I I I think that uh, I'm getting more and more obsessed with different cuts. versions of movies. Yes, I think especially because- now that we understand how different it can. I don't know. The butterfly effect movie is the one that was like kind of was like, Oh, I need to care about these things. Yeah. It completely changes the movie. I think because like part of my job now is editing video and audio, it's more comprehensible to me. And that sort of freaks me out. Yeah. I think about the people making these cuts and I don't know. I'm just right. Kinda... You're making these decisions too. You're, you're changing the tone of our podcast by what you choose to take out and leave in. Yeah. And, or what clips you decide to, need to be in and in versus what don't and and what don't you're god you're playing god well right. he he makes it out of the warehouse he's fine with his it's just a fetch quest and he's he's fine every time fetch quest all right all right now we're back to him remembering he's got a kid um and he's on a payphone in in the that diner that looks fucking delicious um i love a diner that's made out of a train car um he calls it's fucking life without cell phones. Says, Put your mother on the phone now. Why can't I do an... It's like the easiest accent ever and I can't get down. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Woo. Um, Jamie. Jamie. Ja- Wait, is the kid Jamie and... I keep wondering why it sounds so familiar. Is he Jamie and fucking kindergarten cop as well, the kid? No. All right. Um, well, there's like 30 kids. No, so. I'm talking about the kid, the kid of the love interest, the one he, he like gets a relationship with. No, that one's name is... Uh, Freaking! They say it over and over again. Right, Jamie. I can't do it. Get down, Jamie. No. No, there's okay. You can't Google who is the kid in kindergarten. Cop, there's <laughs> so many of them. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, um, he calls and he's. I don't know what he's going to do by talking to the mom. I'm not totally sure. Maybe he's going to fess. Finally, up. fess up. Right. He's just at a diner. He's down. He's. He's. I think he's probably giving up. He knows he's getting close to the parade time. I guess he's just trying to touch base with his mom, but 
the kid instead goes off on him. You never keep your promises. Daddy! Mm-hmm. I don't know the point of his call, but the call instead just makes him feel like shit. And but 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 wouldn't you know it? Myron is at this diner as well, so I guess it it bring p- puts him back on the chase. I can't remember. Does the call like rejuvenate his like desire? Maybe he was like, "Fuck it, I can't find this doll. I almost just got arrested yes, again." That, that is it, and, and so like yeah, it makes him double down. But it's like your kid is just talking about wanting you at the parade. I know. Not the doll. Well, that's the thing. Go. The answer, the solution is in front of you the whole time, but you're so up. You're just obsessed with buying. That's all we can do. That's how we love each other is we buy stuff for yeah. each other. And he doesn't realize. And then an infuriating thing happens. And this is, I now remember what invigorates the, there's still a chance is they hear on the radio, Myron and him, that if you've got the right answer to the, who are the, eight reindeer or the nine reindeer you can have a turbo man doll which is insane that i mean it doesn't matter if i already say this there ends up being no doll and the guy on the radio just meant eventually we'll get you a doll what in what world what ratings were you trying to spike what like what these are the people who listen to your radio show who like you as a person who was this fake prize supposed to impress and help your ratings pal what the fuck you was this radio it. guy? Because the, the DJ chewing. even says, because apparently he says it like it's been rehearsed. Like, no, if you listen very carefully, I said you will get a doll eventually. That's fine, but a disc jockey's only job is to be a likable person, so that way you care that they're the one on the radio playing your records and not someone else. That is the only way they have livelihood. What? asshole idiot disc jockey would be like i want to make the public hate me no because the public won't the only person who will find this out is the winner and they don't, there's no facebook they can't go tell everybody that they got cheated <sighs> i think i figure all i figure all contests are scams like this but back then there's no way for anybody to complain about it okay yeah fine but you whatever they, they run to the radio station yeah the, uh, with the man with the ponytail who i always like this guy i always like this is a good character actor. He would have been great as the cop. The guy that they use as the, um, what do I know him from the most? Uh, let's see who he is. I, I didn't register. Oh yeah. No, he's in a bunch of stuff that I like and he's always a weaselly ass, but he's, it's always, he's always good at it. The way you use the internet, it's not like I do use it. Yeah. Him. He's, he's in like this is sitcoms. Martin Mull from, he was a Leon Carp on Roseanne. That's, That's probably, it. Yep. That's it. But he's also just kind of like a shwarmy dick. Shwarm. You mean smarmy. You say shawarmi. Oh, I, I'm hungry. Is that food? <laughs> Shawarma? Uh-huh. It's like chicken and lamb and stuff, right? But, uh, okay, I uh, Howard, like, runs to the radio station. They're like, if you could name all eight reindeer, which, it's, like, what? Right, who could Everybody knows the who name could, There's a song. But he's 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 running, and he's like, dashle, dashle, plansle. When he does go into the radio station, he's very excited. Yeah. And this is basically the only time in the movie they use Arnold's physicality. Uh-huh. And him raving like a lunatic freaks out the DJ as he would. Again, <laughs> yeah, that's that the works. movie right there. That Do that works. over and over. This guy's insane. He's terrifying everybody he encounters. Everybody who sees him should be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and then they go hide. And he breaks everything he touches <laughs> like this glass door. Doesn't make sense why he has a loving wife and family that are normal. That's the problem. He's got to be normal. Or, he, or it doesn't make sense. But he doesn't make sense because he's trying to be normal. And then Myron, you know, follows. He's he shows up too. Uh, they're informed. No, I'm sorry, you don't. We don't have a doll now. But you, the winner, gets a gift certificate. Which can just take the gift certificate. Here, son, I got. You will get a Turbo Man in four weeks. Again, it's just you know a gift certificate ma- to a toy a toy store. It's not a guarantee he'll get a Turbo Man with that doll with that certificate. Hmm. How can you I get a gift? As, cer- how can you get a gift certificate for a specific I toy don't, man? I don't know. Of course, you can. It can cannot. Be, it can be from the manufacturer, perhaps. You're on a wait list. Enjoy. I mean, listen. It's it's an okay point. I give you okay <laughs> points. <laughs> Thank you. When I was a kid, what I wanted more than anything was a Care Bear doll. But of course, oh I got into Care Bears after the Care Bear Clean up aisle ended. my panties. <laughs> I know. I was fucking four. Okay. Uh, but Sexy. I wanted a Care Bear doll, but I, I, Care Bears weren't manufactured anymore. And I was like, doesn't matter. Santa can make, can make one. And my mom, Christmas morning, said Santa wrote a, a note saying that his elf who makes the Care Bear dolls had the flu. There you go. That's all you have to say to your kid. 
Santa's elf who makes Turbo Man has the flu, but he sent this gift certificate. Her mom's an asshole for not having told you before Christmas morning that you weren't going to get it. But then the whole Santa lie unravels. Yeah, but why let you be so excited for so long just to fucking kill your hopes and dreams? It's a dick move. My mom was probably having her own sort of Turbo Man journey where she's going from store to store looking for cowbell. Yeah, but what, she didn't know they weren't being made anymore? That's different. Nobody knew things back then. <laughs> I, I I forgot to mention this. I have in my notes, I would rather Arnold like goes on a literal eyes wide shut journey where he just sees lots of like sex rituals involving Santa's. Like every every door he opens leads him into like further and further into the weird Christmas Christmas culture. Ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but the yeah, the police the so the police come because the DJ's called the police on them, and then Sinbad fucking says, I'm going to literally go postal. I have a bomb. Which, when did the postal situation happen in real life? It was happening at the time because there's a Seinfeld episode where they talk about going postal. No, 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 no. I mean, literally, there is a shooting that happens where that term term is invented. And it was recent. It just seems like, I don't know, something about 9-11 made it to where we're not casual with any kind of, any kind of, um... Tragedy, but apparently before that we were just casually being funny about it. Between 1970 and 1997, more than 40 people were killed by then current or former employees of the postal service. Yeah. So it wasn't, it doesn't look like it was a single incident. Okay. But there was something in the 90s that no, I'm the very thing aware that, of. The thing that's fucking insane is that he blows up this building with his bomb. He just and this blows is, up a van. Okay, but you then cut to outside you see the building and you see the explosion and this is 18 months after oklahoma city this is insane yeah uh but no harm is done no nobody's hurt that cop looks weird I made the cop weird yeah so now howard goes back home and he sees that he sees that ted is making inroads with his wife and then he remembers ted has a turbo man All's fair in love and war and Turbo Man. I'll go into his house and steal the Turbo Man. Yes, it's a good plan. Uh, But the reindeer gets into the house and causes havoc and the the house gets lit on fire, Uh, uh, including how uh, Ted's uh, statue of the three wise men. And then (laughs) Howard kicks it out out the window and then it lands in the snow in the front yard and Phil Hartman picks it up and he's like, Balthazar. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, okay, you're skipping over the fact that he punches the reindeer in the face. He punches the reindeer in the face. Knocks it out. Okay, knocks I... a giant animal out with his with force, like he would have broken his jaw. And then to make up make it up to that animal, he puts beer in a dog they share dish. A beer. Two. Yeah. That's not cool. That's you know, it's kind of sweet. But That's Howard cool. lights, you know, his neighbor's ha- house on fire, and then Liz, Rita Wilson, and and uh and fucking who's Phil Hart Ted come running in Listen, Ted, and instead of shouting like oh my god you lit my house on fire the wife is just like how are you lied to me <laughs> you're, well, not, you're, you're you're a home invader yeah and an arsonist and what I'm sorry what right what? um you're stealing from a child and Ted is just like our neighbor for shame <laughs> not, oh my god yeah so Ted is going to now, you know, he's going to he's going to assume the role as patriarch of this family and take them all to the parade. So weird. So if you're thinking and this is I mean, what a parade this is. It's something. And if you're thinking this is quite a parade for, you know, Minneapolis, St. Paul to have. It's this Macy's Day Parade levels, if not more impressive. Uh, yeah, it's not real. They don't have this kind of parade. And in fact, this whole sequence was filmed at Universal Studios Hollywood uh, huh. on the back lot in April. Uh, in 100 degree weather. This oh. is the only stuff that wasn't shot on location. And um, yeah, so Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad are in 100 degree weather, degree weather in those costumes. And all these oh extras God. are bundled up in parkas and stuff. Well, yeah, now the melted snow makes a lot more sense. I mean, it just looks, now everything just looks hot now thinking of it. So Arnold uh, Howard is going to follow them there and just so weird gets sort of. Uh, 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 abducted by parade people and they're like although it is the it is another instance of 
his physicality, they're like, well, he obviously must be the stunt man. Right. Who, what other, what normal man looks like this? Right. So they pull him in, they put him in the costume and he d- doesn't stop and say, I'm sorry, what's going on? C- could you please, um, how do you, how does Arnold talk again? I lost it. <laughs> um, yeah. It doesn't say like, don't put me in this costume. I don't understand what's going on. They put him in the costume and then, Meanwhile, uh, Ted is making the moves on Liz and she rejects him and throws eggnog in his face. Well, hits him over the head with the net eggnog cup and breaks his glasses. Arnold Schwarzenegger is Turbo Man now. It's finally, this is obviously this is what the movie's been building infuriating. toward. Infuriating. Yeah, this this is really shitty. Uh, I, but I, it is, I, it did remember, this is why I love this movie so much when I was a kid, uh, is I loved the idea that, okay, the superhero tech really exists. You can fly and shoot discs. You just have to put on the costume. Okay. And All that's right. why I liked it. God, well, it's, you're a simple boy. And then a bunch of shit ensues. And well, a lot well of kid Howard, danger. Howard, as you know, the star of the parade gets to get on the Turbo Man float. And he finds out we're, we have a Turbo Man doll and you can give it away to any kid you want. So he sees his kid and he's out like, Out of the you. box. You don't take a prize toy out of the box. I'm just letting you know that that That's Turbo true. Man is derobed. It's not. Maybe. Yeah, the way they'd actually do it is this is not the one you're actually giving away. This is just represents. And then they have a pristine new Turbo Man in the back. Yeah, you wouldn't. You That's. That's a plot hole, ladies plot and gentlemen. Hole. So, also, your dad has the most recognizable face of any fucking man. How do you not know that's your dad? Because he's a dumb little kid. The woman doesn't know either, and she fucks him. She's a dumb little woman. Yeah. So, yeah, he he gives the toy to his kid, but then, uh uh-oh, Myron Sinbad shows up, and this uh, completely off screen, we at least see what sort of mishap leads to Arnold becoming Turbo Man, Right. but Sinbad just did it on his own, just went and- You see him. Inserted himself into- Well, yes, but it's not like we see the mechanics of how that happened. And also, why is he doing this? Does he know that they're giving away a Turbo Man or is he just trying to get revenge? He's just gone and right. He's just off the deep end. He's he's, he's in his villain arc, as you can see. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense. This, um, like a Marvel movie, it, 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 you know, descends into this really shitty looking battle. It's not as shitty looking as a Marvel movie today. I'm not going to be that harsh, but mm-hmm. they fly around the city and slam into each other and the child is in danger, but he's saved. And then Arnold reveals himself. I'm actually your father. Uh, there's this one sort of weird thing where, where Howard as Turbo Man flies through and ruins this. Uh, the only black characters in the movie. Well, except for Myron Sinbad, right. but they're having a nice family dinner and then their house gets destroyed. But I do, if you could stretch it and say like, this family's trying to have a nice little Christmas together thing. We're simple. We're just going to recognize Jesus and be together. Right. But ooh, commercialism intrudes. Right. And will destroy all of us. And um, Turbo Man wins and the police arrest Myron and he's going to be taken away. But then Jake Lloyd is like, um, actually you can have my, my little, my little guy. Here you go. And Sinbad is like, thank you. This is going to make my my son so happy. And um, what's the message? I do not know. I don't know. But that's that's it. That's the movie. It's a In horrible the, movie. The, is it the, the worst movie the we've seen? The family fun edition just, just fades out right here. But on the super secret Blu-ray that I have, we then cut to them at home oh. decorating the tree. And Liz is like, I'm so happy that you're a superhero, but it only makes me wonder, what gift did you get for me? His super dick. And Arnold's like, what? And that's the end of the movie. Oh, my God. I can't believe they took that away from us. 